All right. So let me just put in layman's terms, as best I can, and I have worked on it, what I take to be the mathematical problem that has emerged in recent decades with Darwin. We know now something about when life seems to have emerged, something between four and five billion years ago. We now know quite a lot about the rate at which random genetic mutations take place. Darwin's theory suggests that evolution arises because random genetic mutations take place and natural selection acts on them. We also know quite a lot about how complicated it is to create proteins that function. Proteins, chains of amino acids, a couple of hundred and longer. And the math simply doesn't work. From the beginning of time to the present, there is some number of mutations that had to have taken place to create the life that we see around us, and it just doesn't add up. Is that right, roughly? Oh, it's much worse than that. Oh. <laughs> because I think one of the very important things, and I'm not a biologist, but I do study the biologists as carefully as I can, is that Darwin's theory, whatever it does or doesn't do, says zero about the origin of life. He didn't right. claim to speak about the origin he of life. He always presumes that the pre-existence of a form from which other that's forms right. evolve. Okay. But unfortunately, for many years, Richard Dawkins uh, obscured everything, obfuscated the whole Dawkins, situation. Dawkins, the Oxford biologist. That's, that's right. right, because he said that uh, natural selection, which Darwin discovered, and he describes it as a blind automatic process, yes. is responsible for the existence and variation of all of life. Now, he later admitted, it took far too long to do it, that evolution in the Darwinian sense cannot be responsible for the origin of life for the simple reason is that evolution, whatever it does or doesn't do, presupposes the existence of life. Right. So you've two separate problems here. One is the origin of life, which we'll goes back... We'll come to that one, I promise. Okay, we'll come to that goes one. back to the origin of information, as right. Stephen has mentioned. But the second is just the sheer calculation. Now, you mentioned things in your questioning yes, that I have to do with the origin of life, proteins and so on. And I, one of my examiners at Cambridge was Sir Fred Hoyle. And he came to Cardiff, where I was a lecturer many years ago, and he shocked everybody by, he just stood up and said to an absolutely packed crowd because he was famous, he said, life cannot have originated on Earth. And there was a, a collective gasp. And he said, I've done the calculations. And mathematically, it is simply impossible. There isn't enough time. And I actually have a copy of those calculations at home. And he just said, it, it's quite obvious if you do the calculations. And he puts it very simply and pregnantly, you know, rabbits produce rabbits and very little else. And what his mathematics, I think, showed him was that the innocent aspect of evolution, which we can all accept, that is you get minor variations on a theme, which yes. Michael here has dealt with so successfully in his book, The Edge of Evolution. That's non-controversial. But once you go beyond that and think of new animals, new body plans, all of that kind of thing, Darwin's not book is the origin of species. It's yes, not minor that, variations right. within species. That, it's that's the right. origin of species. But I, I think, you know, what cuts all this for me now is not what the mathematicians are saying, but what the mathematically conscious biologists right. are saying. Now, one of my friends in Oxford is a very distinguished biologist, uh, Professor Dennis Noble. And he has just made absolutely clear. He said... Neo-Darwinism, that is the modern synthesis. That, uh, the standard textbook theory that we all learn. Natural selection and mutation yep. doesn't need to be improved. It needs to be replaced. Right. And he almost was quoting someone like Lynn Margulis, another very distinguished person, who said, it's dead. So these are people who know about the calculations, who know about the complexity, and saying from that perspective, it's dead. All right. So um, I, Fred Hoyle, we should add, add was a very yeah. famous mid-century, mid-last century astronomer. Yes, that's Correct. right. All right. 